Welcome to Vidya Nagar Online Class. In this session, we'll study about angles, quadrilaterals, and circles. Next, we are going to study about angles. We have studied angles in the previous year itself. Now, see this. Here, there are two rays. They are joining at a point. Usually, you say this point as a corner. This point is also corner is known as vertex. And this will be the angle. Whenever a corner comes or a vertex comes, there will be an angle. That is, the vertex is the joining point of two rays or two lines, you can say. Now, see in this angle, these two lines, rays, are known as arms of the angle. Okay. So, this is an angle formed here. This is the vertex and these two are the arms of the angle. Now, this portion that is the inside portion. What do you say for that? We are studying the previous class. It is the interior of the angle, inside portion. And this will be, this will be the exterior. All these portions are the exterior of angle and this is the interior of the angle. Now we can name, I am going to name this point as A. Let there be a B and another C. So when you name the angle, you can write it as angle A. Or you can say it using three letters. That is B, A, C. Angle B, A, C. But when you write in three letters, one thing should you keep in your mind. Whenever you write an angle using three letters, that vertex must be in the center. That is here A is the vertex. A should be in the center. You can write this angle as angle B, A, C or angle C, A, B. Both are same. B, A, C or C, A, B. Okay. Now see another one. P, Q, R. Now when I mention this angle, I will write it as angle P, Q, R or angle R, Q, P. The thing is the Q vertex. That must be in the middle. The other letters you can interchange anyway. Both are same. Or you can simply write it as angle Q also. But when you go to higher classes, you prefer to write using three letters. Now next is triangles. Triangle is the smallest polygon. Three-sided polygon is the triangle. You know that. You know the shape of the triangle also. So here you are going to study how to write a triangle name. See, this is triangle ABC. So when you mention, you can write it like this. A small, draw a small triangle and write triangle ABC. This is how you write the triangle. Then here also you can see if I put a point P here. Where is the P written? It is in the interior of the angle. This is the interior of the angle. So point P is in the interior of the angle P. Then I write a Q here. So where is Q? It is in the exterior portion. Outside the triangle everywhere it is exterior. So Q is the exterior of the angle. Okay, interior, inside. Exterior means outside. So when you write a triangle, okay, this triangle you can also write it as angle B A C. Sorry, triangle B A C or triangle C A B. But see how many angles are there in this triangle? See when you draw a triangle like this, A B C, three angles will be there. See it? One here, one here, and one here. Three vertex are there. Every vertex I told you there will be an angle. So one, two, three angles are there. Now how will you write this angle B? Angle B can be written as angle B itself. Then otherwise using three letters when you write, how will you write angle? A, B, C. I told you B must be in the middle. A, B, C or angle C, B, A. Then when you write angle C, how will you write angle C? Angle A, C, B or angle B, C, A. Okay. Then angle A. Angle A can be written as angle B, A, C or angle C, A, B. That letter, that is the vertex must be in the center. That is the only thing which you have to take care of when you are writing the name of the angle. Next is the quadrilaterals. Okay. Quadrilateral is a name is new for you, but figure you know. What is this? 
it is a four sided polygon isn't it four sides are there one two three four four sides are there so this is a four sided polygon and four sided polygon is known as quadrilateral okay four sided polygon is known as quadrilateral see this is a rectangle rectangle is a quadrilateral square square is a quadrilateral any figure with four sides are quadrilateral all these are quadrilaterals now see how many angles are for this quadrilateral how many vertex are there one two three four four corners means four vertices are there so how many angles will be there there will be four angles for every vertex i will be on angle one two three four clear now i am going to name this a b c d so this is quadrilateral a b c d so in this quadrilateral a b c d how many sides are there there are three sides isn't it how many sides sorry four sides are there which are they a b line segment a b then b c c d d these are the four sides of the quadrilaterals and there are four angles also which are the angle a angle a you can write it as angle d a b the next angle b you can write it as angle a b c the next angle c you can write it as angle b c d the next angle d you can write it as angle c d a so four sides are there four angles are there okay adjacent and opposite these two terms you have to study next opposite you know that word is familiar for you what do you mean by adjacent adjacent means nearby okay see i draw a quadrilateral here quadrilateral a b c d we know that there are four sides for this quadrilateral which are they a b b c c d and a d four sides are there now they ask write the adjacent sides of this quadrilateral adjacent means nearby so see a b which are the nearby sides b c is nearby isn't it a b and b c are nearby sides so you can write a b and b c are adjacent sides what about this one a b is also adjacent to d a isn't it these two are also nearby so okay you can write a b and d a or a d both are same okay a b b c these two are adjacent these two are adjacent can you name another say take a d which is adjacent to a d to a d you can say d c a d and d c are adjacent and a d and which is one more adjacent side for a d this is also adjacent these two are adjacent sides a d and a b so did you notice one thing whenever you write adjacent sides one letter will be common for both see a b and b c b is common there then a b and d a a is common there a d and d c d c d is common then a d and a b a is common so whenever you write two adjacent one adjacent side two adjacent sides one letter will be common for both then similarly which are the opposite sides here opposite sides you can very easily found which is opposite to ab dc isn't it so ab and dc are opposite and another ad opposite to ad that is bc ad and bc now similarly see draw another figure here with the same figure a b c d adjacent angles adjacent angles when you write the adjacent angles which are the adjacent angles adjacent means nearby so to d which is the nearby angle to d angle d and angle a these two are nearby isn't it then what about angle d and angle c they are also nearby so angle a and angle d nearby angles then angle d and angle c then to angle a which is another adjacent to angle a 
to angle A, angle B is adjacent, isn't it? So, angle A and angle B. To B which is adjacent other than A, A and B are adjacent and then B and C are adjacent, isn't it? So, angle B and angle C, they are also adjacent. Then, what about opposite angles? Opposite angles. Angle A, which is opposite to angle A? Angle A opposite means this one, angle C. Then angle B opposite is angle D. Okay. So adjacent side, adjacent angles, opposite sides and opposite angles. Understood? Next is diagonals. See, this is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral have many vertices? 1, 2, 3, 4 vertices are there for the quadrilateral. Now see, the line joining the opposite vertices is known as the diagonal. So, what is the opposite of this vertex? This is the opposite for this vertex. So, you join these two vertices. The line joining these two vertices, that is opposite vertices, is a diagonal. So, here also you can draw one. See, this is another diagonal. So, if I name this quadrilateral as A, B, C, D. A, B is, sorry, A, C is a diagonal. And D, B is another diagonal. See another figure. This is also a polygon. So, there are vertices for the polygon. See, these are the vertices, corners for the polygon. Join the opposite vertices. One, two. Then for this one, two, see, then here. So, so many diagonals are here. So, indeed, for the quadrilateral, you have only two diagonals. So, the line joining the opposite vertices of a polygon is known as a diagonal, okay. Now see next is the circle. Circle you know. You know to draw a circle using compass and pencil isn't it. So we studied what are the part of the circle today. First we study the center. Center of the circle. See when you draw using the compass. You keep the compass at a point isn't it. And with a particular radius you draw the circle using the pencil. That is the center of the circle isn't it. That center point is the center of the circle. Now see, from the center to the circle, that line is known as radius. This is the radius from the center to circle, a line. We can so draw so many radius anywhere, can it? From here you can draw, from here to here you can draw so many radius you can draw for the circle. But all the radius will be of the same length for the circle. Now next is diagonal. Have you heard that? Sorry, diameter. That is also familiar for you. Radius and diameter. Also, what is a diameter? The line joining two ends of the circle and should pass through the center. It is the diameter. See, the line joining two ends of the circle and passing through the center. That is the diameter. So, this line is the diameter. Here, yeah. so center of the circle, radius of the circle, diameter of the circle. Okay. Now next is chord. Chord is any line joining the two sides of the circle. See diameters of the line joining the two sides of the circle. But the thing is that it should pass through the center. Chord is any line joining the two sides of the circle. Okay. So, what is the difference between chord and diameter? Diameter should pass through the center of the circle. But chord, it is not necessary that it should pass through the center. Any line joining the two sides of the circle is a chord. This is another chord. Okay. Even diameter is a chord. See, it's a line passing through the circle, joining the two ends of the circle. So, diameter is also a chord. So, all diameters are chord. But all chords are not diameter. Why? But the diameter... Be the chord becomes a diameter when it passes through the center. That is the difference. Now next is 
so you understood what a chord is any line joining to the two sides of a circle next is the segment and sector two new names segment and sector see these are the parts of the circle segment means see i have drawn a chord here and there is an arc see you left an arc arc is a part of the circle okay arc is a part of a circle see a b if i give arc you write it as like now this is a arc okay now see segment is a portion between the arc and chord so this portion the shaded region is known as segment clear the shaded region is known as segment what about the sector sector is this area what is the difference between the segment and sector see sector means two sides will be radius of the circle and one will be arc that is it look like a cone sector and this is the segment segment means one arc and one chord sector means one arc will be there but the other two sides are radius of the circle so these are the parts of the circle center radius diameter arc chord segment sector okay it's very important part question for the exam so draw and study figure now next you do the exercise exercise 4.3 page number 8080 see the first question name the angle in the given figure see this angle a b c d is the figure given which are the angles here one angle here two three four isn't it so how will you name it you can name it as angle d a b angle d a b or a b a d both are same then angle b how will you name it a b c angle a b c the next is c angle d c b or b c d then angle d a d c these are the four angles of the figure the next question in the given diagram name the points in the interior of angle d o e which is a point in the interior of angle d o e so this is the angle d o e this is the angle in the interior which is the point a a is in the interior of the angle isn't it so a is the answer next in the exterior of e o e e o f e o f this is the angle e o f to the exterior of that which are the angles c is there isn't it you can a is there d is there all are exterior so they asked only one so i wrote here c then next angle e on angle e o f on mean on the arms e o f on this angle which is the point yeah you can write b b is there okay now the last question draw a rough diagram of two angles such that they have one point in common you have to draw two angles with one point in common see i have drawn here two angles one two they have a common point no so this will be the figure two points in common it is not possible to draw not possible with one point you can draw with two points you cannot draw two angles three points also not possible four point also not possible with one ray in common that will be the same figure this one see here also two angles are and one ray is common for both the angle for this angle also this is the this angle also this ray is common so the same figure comes here also draw a rough sketch of a triangle abc i am drawing the rough sketch of a triangle abc a b c mark a point p in its interior mark a point p in its interior so in this interior means interior of the triangle i mark the point p then and a point q in its exterior outside anywhere you can draw a 
point mark a point q is the point a in the exterior or in the interior c in the triangle abc is the point a in the exterior or in the interior where is this a the point a is actually here no it is not in the exterior or not in the interior it is on the triangle isn't it so a you should write it is a is on the triangle it is not in the interior or not in the exterior we write the alphabet a exterior but the point is on the triangle isn't it now see the next question identify three triangles in the figure so this is the figure given figure is like this isn't it a b c and d which are the three three triangles sorry three triangles in the figure yeah triangle a b c first one is triangle a b c then next second smaller one a b d triangle a b d then third one triangle a d c a d c so these are the three triangles in the given figure now next question write the name of six sorry write the name of seven angles seven angles are there which are they one two three then four five six seven so how will you name it first b a b c isn't it second this one angle b c a third this one angle b a c fourth this one how will you write fourth b a d angle b a d this also a no so how will you write that angle d a c d a c the next one here b d a angle b d a sixth one then seventh one a d c angle a d c so these are the seven angles then write this name of six line segments six line segments which are six line segments six line segments are c a b is a line segment a b a d a c then another b d d c then d a isn't it six line segments are there in this triangle then write two triangle have angle b as common see this is the angle b it is common for two triangles which are they the angle triangle a b c that bigger triangle b is common then this smaller triangle also triangle a b d there also b is common angle for both the triangles see the exercise 4.6 from the figure identify the center of the circle this is the figure so which is the center yeah o is the center o a diameter diameter is a c a c two points in the interior inside how many points are there p is there o is also interior of circle so p and o a sector which is a sector this is a sector isn't it so when you write the sector you have to write the portion between oab and ab portion between oab and arc ab like that way you can write then three radii how many radius are there o a another radius o b o c a chord e d point in the exterior where is there the point in the exterior yeah here is a point so d is a, what is it d or q q okay q is a point in the exterior a segment 
So, many segments are there, isn't it? You can write AC, ED, all our segments. So, I will write ED. Now, next question. Is every diameter of the circle a chord? Yeah. Is every diameter a chord? Yes. Every diameter is a chord. Is every chord of a circle diameter? No. Because the diameter should pass through the center. So, every chord is not a diameter. But every diameter is a chord. So, next question you can do it as homework. Watch the video carefully. Write down all the points and problems. And then do the homework and send it to me. Thank you.